Lord has led you into a land flowing with milk and honey, that the law of the Lord may always be on your lips. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us call to mind our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us glory to God in the highest. And, and on earth, earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks, thanks for your great you. glory, Lord God, Heavenly King. O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who give constant increase to your church by new offspring, grant that your servants may hold fast in their lives to the sacrament they have received in faith, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. On the day of Pentecost, Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and proclaimed, You who are Jews, indeed all of you staying in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to my words. You who are children of Israel, hear these words. Jesus the Nazarene was a man commended to you by God, with mighty deeds, wonders, and signs, which God worked through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. This man delivered up by the set plan and foreknowledge of God, you killed, using lawless men to crucify him. But God raised him up and released him from the throes of death, because it was impossible for him to be held by it. For David says of him, I saw the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand I shall not be disturbed. Therefore my heart has been glad and my tongue has exalted. My flesh too will dwell in hope because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, nor will you suffer your Holy One to see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. My brothers, one can confidently say to you about the patriarch David that he died and was buried, and his tomb is in our midst to this day. But since he was a prophet and knew that God had sworn an oath to him, that he would set one of his descendants upon his throne, he foresaw and spoke of the resurrection of the Christ, that neither was he abandoned to the netherworld, nor did his flesh see corruption. God raised this Jesus, of this we are all witnesses, exalted at the right hand of God. He poured forth the promise of the Holy Spirit that he received from the Father, as you both see and hear. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Keep me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, my Lord are you. O Lord, you, my allotted portion and my cup, you it is who hold fast my lot. Alleluia. I bless the Lord who counsels me. Even in the night, my heart exhorts me. I set the Lord ever before me. With him in my right hand, I shall not be disturbed. Alleluia. Therefore, my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. My body, too, abides in confidence because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, nor will you suffer your faithful one to undergo corruption. Alleluia. You will show me the path of life, fullness of joys in your presence, the delights at your right hand forever. Alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord
Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went away quickly from the tomb, fearful yet overjoyed, and ran to announce the news to his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them on their way and greeted them. They approached, embraced his feet, and did him homage. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. While they were going, some of the guard went into the city and told the chief priests all that had happened. The chief priests assembled with the elders and took counsel. Then they gave a large sum of money to the soldiers, telling them, You are to say, His disciples came by night and stole him while we were asleep. And if this gets to the ears of the governor, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. The soldiers took the money and did as they were instructed, and the story has circulated among the Jews to the present day. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I have a good friend of mine. He was assigned up in, uh, in North Jersey with an old professor at the seminary. And this is a man who's over in his late 90s now. You know, he's a real legend. And he was known for giving these very kind of, uh, kind of terse remarks, not as a way to kind of be dismissive, but he was one who had really worked on kind of saying as much as he could in very few words as possible. So he was very famous for these kind of three-sentence homilies. And you could say, well, he just, you know, doesn't take much time to prepare, but my friend says he had to help type him up with him before, and he starts out with a lot, and then he kind of wheedles it down and wheedles it down and wheedles it down until it's exactly the words that he wants to say. So this is like a real art form for this guy. And so this man, he was helping out at a soup kitchen a while back, this, uh, this older priest. And one of the nuns who was there, they had, she had been in a discussion with the other sisters, and they were talking about the resurrection, apparently. And, you know, she goes up to him and says, you know, Monsignor, about the resurrection. Like, can you talk to me about that, please? You help me to understand it better. And the Monsignor apparently kind of, you know, he sits for a moment, he closes his eyes, thinks, and then he looks at her and says, it happened. And you could see the look on her face that whatever it was, this is exactly the words that she needed to hear. And this cut right to the core of the whole mystery for her. And she goes, thank you. That's exactly what I needed to hear. Like, that's it. It happened. And it's amazing because if you just say that lightly, you know, it doesn't carry much weight. But you can tell that it really, it meant something. And for us, what we celebrate in this whole week is that this happened. It's not a story. It's not just something we talk about. It really happened. Jesus, who truly became man, truly died and rose. And he rose not just as Lazarus or the daughter of Jairus rose. Both miracles our Lord worked. He says that those were a bringing back to life, but those people that he raised from the dead, they would again be brought back to, to die at a future date. Whereas Jesus, what happened there was something that was truly new. And that he is risen never to die again. And that is something that we can truly celebrate and something that we can reflect on, and we're given to reflect on throughout this whole week as we'll keep hearing about these different encounters of the risen Christ. And you see, this took a while, that truth of it happened, to sink into the disciples too. And we'll see a bit of their kind of questioning and doubts as they're trying to kind of understand just how real this was. And so I just want to share a little bit from the catechism on this. In speaking about the resurrection of these other people versus Jesus' resurrection, he says, at some particular moment, those others would die again. But Christ's resurrection is essentially different. In his risen body, he passes from the state of death to another life beyond time and space. At Jesus' resurrection, his body is filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. He shares a divine life in his glorious state, 
so that St. Paul can say, of, say Christ is the man from heaven. And so as we continue this week to reflect upon Jesus' resurrection, we can continue too to keep in mind the effect that that also has for ourselves, of us who now share in that body of Christ that this hope of Jesus we see fulfilled in him is that hope that we now hold out for ourselves too, to share in this resurrection one day. So let that continue to fill our hearts with a greater sense of hope and a greater sense of joy as we rest in the beauty of this mystery. Let us offer our prayers and petitions to the Lord. For the church, may the Holy Spirit continue to guide and protect her in this Easter season and magnify her light of truth and goodness in the, wor in the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders, may the Lord bless them with a fearless vision to act for the true common good of those they govern. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who struggle for all for all whose struggles with addiction have caused separation from their families, may they, through the mercy of God, be reconciled with their loved ones. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who were welcomed into the church at the Easter Vigil, may they continue to grow in the gifts and fruits of the Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our deceased family members, may they soon share in the joy of the resurrected Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the intentions of the Bronco family for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we humbly pray that you grant these petitions and prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept graciously, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your peoples, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day, above all, to loud you yet more gloriously, when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. way 
day when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of faith. Save us, Savior, Savior of the world, for by, by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and James, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Vincent Ferrer, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you, your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as you wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Christ, having risen from the dead, dies now no more. Death will no longer have dominion over him. Alleluia.
joining us online, our spiritual communion prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May the grace of this Paschal Sacrament abound in our minds, we pray, O Lord, and make those you have set on the way of eternal salvation worthy of your gifts, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Mighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Alleluia, Thanks. alleluia. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah.